Good morning, afternoon, or evening, whenever this finds you. Welcome back to a special edition of Bloom and Bounty. I'm your host, KB, and I'm so happy to be here for another dope episode of Bloom and Bounty. First off, first off, we've launched our very own Instagram page. Yes, after much deliberation with myself, we decided it's time to grow our community on a platform where I can share even more with you. So please, please head over to Bloom and Bounty on Instagram. Follow us for snippets of our episodes, possibly even some video podcast recordings. But I must say, disclaimer, I don't know, I'm a little on the fence about the video podcast recordings. And I don't know if it's because I sit a certain way and so acknowledging a camera, I feel like will throw me off. <laughs> But we will figure it out one way or another. So please go and follow Bloom and Bounty on Instagram so that it pushes me to start experimenting with video content. <laughs> oh, okay. Some other items on my list were to ask you listeners to subscribe and follow us on the platforms you listen to Bloom and Bounty on. I know that I do this, whether it's a podcast I listen to on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, those are my main two. I'll tune in every week to a podcast. And unbeknownst to me, I don't even realize I haven't subscribed or rated that podcast. So please, if you're listening to this right now, please rate and subscribe to Bloom and Bounty. When you rate and subscribe to Bloom and Bounty, it increases our visibility. And we want more listeners to discover this podcast, right? So go ahead and do this now. It takes three seconds to make my day. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Where are my wind chimes? All right. Now I want to make sure I squeeze in some moments for some rooted reflections. February. February, it's been a whirlwind of activity this month at Bloom and Bounty and our farming projects <laughs> from launching our latest product on KB and Bloom, unveiling a new site, Nails and Bloom, to collaborating with our local restaurants and a marine research organization here in town. It feels like we wrapped like we've been wrapped in this continuous embrace of community and innovation. I'm just I'm here for it, but February, come on now, can I rest? <laughs> the excitement of these ventures alone have been everything to me. And so I'm eager to share that. Don't you worry, we're gonna, I'm gonna be sharing more about that event and its impact in future episodes. But today, because we gotta remember where we are right now. We're in February and remember where we're giving a lot of homage to the black pioneers and current ones and this episode is going to be really focusing on the giants on in the agricultural community upon whose shoulders modern agriculture stands and you know we we've been on this journey back and forth last week's episode was was really about us focusing on one pioneer booker t Watley. if you haven't haven't listened to that what are you waiting for Go listen to it. It's a good one. I'm not just saying that, but it really puts you on to so much information about this man that we didn't learn in school. Um, and so I want to continue with that. Um, and then next week, it's going to be kind of like current black agricultural innovators. But in today's episode, um, it's going to be about the pioneers of the past and how that very much influences the now as a farmer, black farmer, black female farmer okay this black history month in this episode we're uncovering the stories of four black innovators who whose contributions have not just changed the way we farm but also have sown the seeds for this more sustainable and equitable world now let's get into it this episode is proudly sponsored by kb and bloom a beacon of support and inspiration for bipoc women seeking wellness and lifestyle content that resonates with their experiences as you dive into the stories and reflections in Bloom and Bounty, remember that each episode is made possible by the unwavering support of KB and Bloom. Whether you're turning in for the farming tales, the creative insights, or a moment of introspection, KB and Bloom stands as a steadfast companion, cultivating connections and growth. Explore the site for yourself 
at kbandbloom.com. A treasure trove of articles, affirmations, and content crafted with your journey in mind. Now let's ease on back into this week's episode. Now, I wanted to start with a name you might not know, but should, and his name is Henry Blair. He was born in Maryland around 1807 or in 1807, and Blair was the second African-American to receive a U.S. patent, despite the constraints of his era. And, you know, one of the things I kept asking myself as as I was learning about him, because I, too, did not know of him, I was thinking, what drives a man to innovate in a world that limits his freedoms. But for Blair, it was the pursuit of efficiency and smarter labor in farming. Now in 1834, Henry Blair was granted a patent for his innovative seed planter, seed planter, which is a device crafted to streamline and expedite the planting of corn. This ingenious mechanism featured a compartment that meticulously dispensed seeds into the earth with the company rakes trailing behind to ensure the seeds were covered with soil. And then two years later, my boy Blair secured another patent, this time for his cotton planter. This invention designed to be drawn by two horses efficient, efficiently sowed cotton seeds into the freshly tilled earth, marking this crazy advancement in agricultural practices of the time. Now imagine the fields of the 1800s, the back breaking work of planting each seed by hand under the harsh sun. But Blair looked at this and saw room for change. His inventions, the seed planter and the cotton planter mechanized these tasks, paving the way for the farm efficiencies we often take for granted today. Now, some of you may not know there are so many tools available today. I mean, there's, there's some that do like five things in one. And so thank you, Blair, because it's this reminder that innovation often sprouts from the soil of necessity. The next pioneer on the list is George Washington Carver. Now, I know you've heard his name because it's often synonymous with his work with peanuts. Carver was actually a pioneer of crop rotation, enriching the depleted southern soils by alternating cotton with nitrogen fixing plants like peanuts and sweet potatoes. Carver's genius was in his holistic approach to farming. He championed biodiversity long before it became a buzzword. And in today's world where zero waste and organic define this new agricultural ethos, Carver's work feels not just modern, but visionary, really. All right, now our next innovator on the list is Frederick McKinley Jones. Now, Jones transformed the way we transported food with his invention of mobile refrigeration. Before Jones, the idea of shipping fresh produce across these crazy distances was, it was non-existent, really. And it was always this gamble against time and decay because things go bad when you're traveling so far. But his invention, it came at a critical time during World War II. So we weren't just saving, or Jones wasn't just saving food, but he was out here saving lives too. And if you think about it, today as we enjoy fresh food from around the globe, how much of that is from so far away, it's easy to overlook this this chain of logistics that make it all possible. So good looking out, Jones. Now, our last pioneer on the list is someone you should be familiar with based on last week's episode. Now, I'm not going to go too deep into talking about Booker T. Watley because if you listen to last week's episode, you'll know everything you need to know about him. He's brilliant. And when you're talking about agricultural innovation, you would be crazy not to mention him because he weaves this unique thread. Um, You know that he's a horticulturalist. 
He was a professor at Tuskegee and he penned how to make $100,000 farming 25 acres. A guy that championed small farms long before local and organic became the gold standards of modern agriculture. We know that his vision was clear. He was big on farming could be profitable and sustainable. You could have your cake and eat it too. And it was because his approach with community in mind. His advocacy for community supported agriculture was revolutionary. So I want to let you know just a little bit about him. So if you are thinking, I want to learn about his legacy, his blueprint for the local food movements we celebrate today, um, go and listen to last week's episode because he is brilliant, brilliant, brilliant um, in a lot of the things he believed in. And now, as we close out this week's episode, I want to leave you with a poignant reminder from Bell Hooks, who said, Within white supremacist capitalist culture in the United States, there has been a concentrated effort to bury the history of the black farmer. This quote resonates with me so deeply for so many reasons because, and one of them, and several of them, I should say, Um, One, because the stories we've been sharing or I've been sharing on this podcast with you. Two, because we're not just highlighting the innovations that have transformed agriculture in a way. But three, because of the systemic barriers that many of these pioneers had to overcome. And I want us to remember that we need to remember (laughs) and to celebrate and to continue uncovering this rich tapestry of contributions that black innovators have made to our world. Their legacies are not just footnotes, not over here. Mm -mm. They're not footnotes in history, but are foundational to the way we live and we thrive today. And on that note, I'll see you next week. Take care, self care. And remember, you need you. Bloom and Bounty is brought to you by KB and Bloom and the Bloom Media Group. Follow this podcast to stay connected as weekly episodes are released and follow KB and Bloom on all social accounts. Go to kbandbloom.com for more info.